Happy Sunday morning, Center for Spiritual Living, Sarasota. I am so happy that you're here with us this morning. My name is Ron Frost. I am a spiritual practitioner here at the center. And I want to begin by greeting you with Namaste. Namaste is a Sanskrit word, which means the divinity within me recognizes, honors, and blesses the divinity within you. And no matter where you're listening in from, if you're a longtime follower or just a newcomer that's checking us out for the first time, we're here to help you discover that personal relationship with the God of your understanding and awaken the truth that is already within you. Now, each time when we get together, we actually begin by reciting both our vision and our mission. The words can now be seen on your screen. Feel free to join along. Our vision is empowering spiritual growth as a loving, inclusive, worldwide community. And our mission is we teach science of mind principles and other life-affirming spiritual truths. We explore, learn, grow, connect, honoring all paths to God. We offer in-person and online weekly services, classes, workshops, affirmative prayer support, and other spiritual tools. We create opportunities for joyful social connection, community outreach and service, and we celebrate the awakening of our innate spiritual magnificence. And now I invite you just to simply relax, put your mind in that soft, easy meditative state, breathe, let go, and allow this song from Jay Poindexter and Bob Teasdale to simply relax you as they set the mood with an Eddie Watkins song called, God Is, I Am. God is, I am, right here, right now. God is the infinite love, the infinite joy, the infinite peace of mind, and I am that. God is the everlasting sacred sense of freedom and well-being and life expression, and I am that. God is love, and I am that. 
For there is only one infinite sacred thing, and whether we call it God or the love beauty of the universe, or that which is source creator, it is that which manifests out of itself the many magnificent examples and representatives of God. So as all things are of God, all things are of the same sacred source, that is my truth too. That is the truth for everyone listening at this now moment. That's the truth for the Center for Spiritual Living and all the beautiful souls that are joining in here and now, or that's the same truth for all of humanity. It's the same truth for everything. God is, I am. I am this sacred love, beauty, infinite thing that expresses as me, in me and through me and as my life. And I am completely guided by this beauty, this love, this joy that is expressing all around me supporting my life, keeping me healthy, well, vibrant. I am in a life that allows me to express my, my true creativity and my divine purpose. I have all that I need. I am blessed. I am living what I call freedom, sacred freedom. For God is, and I am. And it's in gratitude that I anchor these words in this prayer, in this moment of time, into the law of all good, the law of mind. And so it is. Today we have a very special message from Reverend Christy Hartwick called Freedom and Independence, an Inside Job. Let me share a few words about Reverend Christy. She is an ordained religious science minister, a leadership development expert, and a master facilitator, having her own executive coaching practice for over 15 years. She has also had a 30 year career in the high tech world, including several years at the executive level. In addition, she is a member of the executive committee of the Women's Leadership Board for the Kennedy School of Government at Harvard. As a founder of Inspirational Gatherings, Christy creates music and spoken word events to invite each of us to walk our own path with a more open heart. She divides her residence between Italy and St. Petersburg, Florida. Reverend Christie and her wife, Jane, have four children and five grandchildren between them. Reverend Christie, in her message, freedom and independence and inside job. But before we hear from Reverend Christie, here is Jay and Bob once again performing Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a soul like me. was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see, t'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace 
embrace my fears relieved a precious deed that grace Freedom cannot rest. We who believe in freedom shall not rest until it's done. Freedom. Greetings. Good to be with you again. 
it's that time of year we're thinking about celebrating independence and freedom. It's a tricky time. Right now we are facing some challenges that help us to see that disease, the pandemic, the disease of racism, things like that can keep us from feeling the freedom that's inherent in us. So let's talk a little bit about freedom today and independence. I wanted to start with this idea of freedom itself and when we first noticed that we were free. And I was thinking about it from my childhood. I don't know about you, but I remember being able to get up in the morning and pack a little snack, get on my bike and ride and go places and explore things and, and find something interesting, a little creek or a pond. And no one was worried about me. I was able to do this and be gone for hours and hours and hours until I got hungry and came back home. It let me climb trees, climb fences, you know, get into all sorts of little kind of tiny troubles. But that was back then. I was born in 1959. And for the years of the 60s, in suburbs, you could play and you were free. And childhood was still childhood. I could lay on the grass and I could look up at the clouds and I could imagine and I could dream. I could play in the evenings with my neighbors and friends. We could play hide and seek. We could play all kinds of games until the grass made you itch because you'd been playing outside in the heat so much in the summertime. That felt like freedom as a child. As soon as you began to go into structures and organizations, even as a child, your freedom started to change some. When it was school time, you needed to be there at a certain time. You needed to sit in a certain place and do certain kind of activities that were based on the structure of the classroom day. So you began to be organized by something external to you. And then of course that continued all the way through your school years, however far in school you decided to go. Whether it was just through high school or when you went to college, a lot of structure. Things were due, things were required. There were activities that you could partake in and there were those that were not allowed during the school day. So there was structure and there were rules and there were policies that you got introduced to throughout your career in school. And depending on who you were and where you were, the kinds of policies, rules, and organizations you're introduced to might be different. But we all had that structure. And then we went on to work, whether we worked when we were young or whether we worked a little bit later after college, we went on to work. Another organization, structure, policies, rules, and we began to maybe lose sight of that part of us that would open our day and spend it the way our heart was calling us to do. And instead, we had to-do lists and requirements and deadlines, and it almost became who we were. And maybe some of you are in that mode right now where you're working and you're at the desk all day, and it doesn't feel very much like freedom. So when we think about freedom, and we look at it from the standpoint of where is our freedom? If we must do some things, if we are in a circumstance where there's structure and organizations and policies that tell us that we have constraint on what we do or how we spend our time, where's our freedom? Where is your freedom today? I contemplated that because sometimes I have a tremendous amount of control over my day because I have semi-retired and not all of you are in that position and I recognize that. But when I do have a lot of schedule and structure and requirements, I think where is my freedom now? And my freedom is in a few places. 
in a few practices. But all of those places and practices reside within me. One of the first places of freedom is in curiosity. I can always remain curious. I can always use my imagination. That was a gift of spirit to me. I can imagine things. I can dream. This is a freedom. I am also free to choose my response to what's ever happening in my life. Whatever's happening in my small circle or in the larger circle, in the community, and in the world, I have freedom to choose. I think about another type of freedom, and it's a freedom of expression. Some of us have even more freedom to express. This happens to be July now, so we've ended LGBTQ Pride Month, but we do know that some people in our LGBTQ community may not feel a level of freedom to completely express. But most of us have a tremendous amount of freedom to express who we are. So it's one of our choices. Our choice to use our imagination, our curiosity, our choice to how to respond to things that are happening, and our choice about our expression. So how does all this tie together in terms of our being independent but yet interdependent? One thing I would offer is that we all want the same freedoms and we all want to help our brothers and sisters with their freedoms. So, so imagine a world where we are all free at a similar level. We are all free. We're free in terms of our ability to choose how to respond. We're free in terms of our imagination. We're free in terms of our expression. And we're actually free to access opportunities because there are not systemic or structural things in the way for anyone. What a world that could be for all of us. Because we depend on each other, because how well your brother or sister are doing in the neighborhood next door affects the quality of your life, it matters to the whole how each of us are doing. So one of the freedoms we have is to choose to respond to the current situation with compassion and caring for the whole. How can we best respond to the pandemic? Not just for ourselves, but for every person that may be affected by it. For our vulnerable neighbor, for a neighbor who doesn't feel vulnerable, for youth, for the elderly. What is my individual response? I am free to craft that. And given the situation with such intensity around race and race relations, what is my response? What does my imagination and my curiosity direct me to do? What do I do with my freedom in this situation today? What is the meaning of being a nation of free people if not all people are free. I can choose to care about that. And I can choose to express myself. And I decide what that expression looks like. What kind of choices will you make? What kind of choices are yours to make? What does freedom look like in your life? We who believe in freedom shall not rest. There's that uh, refrain in a wonderful song from Sweet Honey and the Rock. But when it says shall not rest, it doesn't mean that you don't take care of yourself during these very challenging times because they're full of opportunity, but we also do need to take care of ourselves. But the shall not rest is the idea of not resting in terms of giving up on or letting go of the desire to have a world that works for everyone. We don't rest on that principle. We rest within, we build our inner strength 
We build our imagination and our curiosity. We build our beautiful ability to respond to life with love. And we build our expression as an expression of love. We're free to do this. And the question for us is, what do we do with our freedom? I am deciding with my freedom to spend time with people like you, with friends, with some like-minded people, but also I'm spending time with people who are struggling right now, who are having a hard time with both the idea of isolating and masking and distancing, and who are having a really difficult time with the anger and frustration and hatred and grief and sadness that we're experiencing around race in this country right now. So I am using my freedom and choosing to be with anyone who wants to be centered and to find the place within them as a place of love because I'm free to do this. I'm free to choose my response to these times right now. There's some beautiful thoughts that I, I love to remind myself of, but there's an expression that we are made for times such as these. If the teachings of new thought and the teachings of unity and the teachings of oneness and that we're all one in God, in spirit, in universal source are worth anything, they're absolutely worth everything in a time like this. So I celebrate my freedom. I celebrate the opportunity to use my imagination, to use my curiosity to learn, to decide from love to respond and to express my unique humanity. And I celebrate this freedom and I celebrate this freedom with you. May we all enjoy some fun and relaxation and rest during this Independence Day. May we also remember that while we are independent and unique emanations of source of God, of the good, we are also dependent and interdependent with each other. So we care for the whole and our freedom and the freedom of all others are connected inextricably always in spirit. I thank you for your time. depths in the dark of my heart all alone in the night no sun in sight in a dream what does anything mean I can't get a grip on reality then I hear a voice telling me I have a choice Stay strong, walk through, walk on Be still, hand over your wheel Give up control, let it be, let it go Hope, 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 hope. Holding on to something that I just can't see Trying to find me some spirituality Give me a sign, I'm gonna be alright Help me make it through this desperate night Then I hear a voice Telling me I have a choice It says, hang on, it ain't gonna be long Stay strong, walk through, walk on Be still, hand over your wheel 
give up control, let it be, let it go. Stand tall, cause we all fall, we're gonna make it in the end, my friend. Oh, 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 oh. Hang on, it ain't gonna be long. Stay strong, walk through, walk on. Be still, hand over your wheel. Give up control, let it be, let it go. Stand tall, cause we all fall. We're gonna make it in the end, my friend. Hope, you're gonna make it in the end. I say hope, you're gonna make it in the end, my friend. We're gonna make it in the end. I say hope, we're gonna make it in the end, my friend. We're gonna make it in the end. I say hope. We're gonna make it in the end, my friend. Thank you, Bob and Jay, for that wonderful song called Hope by Amy Steinberg. And thank you, Reverend Christie, for that wonderful uplifting message, Freedom and Independence, an Inside Job. Here at the Center for Spiritual Living Sarasota, we want you to know that we are available to support you in knowing the power and presence of your spiritual essence. We offer support through prayer, inspiration, encouragement, and opportunities for virtual connection and community. And we really appreciate your financial gifts. In support of us, so we can continue and offer support to you. There are three simple ways to share your gift. On your screen, you'll see our website where you can select the donate button, which allows you to contribute via PayPal or credit card, or you can mail a check to, your, to our address shown here on the website or set up automatic contributions through your own online banking. The website is www.cslsarasota.com. And now I invite you to take your virtual gift in your hand, place it over your heart, blessing it as you share and know with me, my gift goes forth to heal, to bless, and to prosper and a divine flow returns it to me multiplied abundantly. And now please join me in our offering affirmation shown on our screen. I give thanks that I may share of my good, my love, and my support. Thank you so much. Would you like prayer support? Have a request on our website at www cslsarasota.com, notice the green prayer request button, which allows you to send us your prayer request. Our four licensed spiritual practitioners are Kathleen Frankert, Jim Grove, Nicole Leeds, and myself. And we stand by ready to know and affirm spiritual truth with and for you, no matter what the situation. We are also available for spiritual coaching sessions by appointment. These sessions offer the opportunity to explore a deeper understanding and practical application of the spiritual truth that eclipses your problem or challenging issue. For more information, check out the practitioner page at our website by selecting the staff tab on the left. Would you like news about our upcoming events? Sign up for our weekly e-newsletter here on our website or click our Facebook link. One more reminder, so popular every Wednesday from 7 to 8 p.m. are spiritual living circles via Zoom, open to all. And they're facilitated by our spiritual practitioner, Jim Grove. This is a great time to connect in community. These circles are informal, inspiring, thought-provoking, and free. Email Jim Grove at the address on your screen to receive 
this week's Zoom link, discussion questions, and copy of Science of Mind article to be discussed. This week's article is called Our Highest Calling by Jeffon Seeley. And now as we conclude this sacred time together, let us go forward into the day and week ahead with peace, love, and joy in our hearts. And please join us in singing our closing song, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Have a wonderful and blessed week, everyone. Bye-bye. And leave.